In this chapter, we will start to explore the test script that we recorded in the last module. In the previous chapter, we recorded a script that inserts a flight into our flight reservation system, and that's the script I currently have open. As well as the script, which we can see here, we also have some other panels displayed, and that's because we're working in the default layout. So over on the left hand side, next to the script, we can see I have the resources panel open. Down at the bottom, I have tabs for other panels such as the test flow, available keywords, resources, the data table, the active screen. Many of these panels we do not need to begin with, so I'm going to close the panels and then later as we go through the course introduce them as we need them. There are a number of ways of doing this. First of all I'm going to maximize QTP. To close the panels I can close them with the close button on each panel or off the view menu I can see which panels are displayed and I can toggle them on and off. Or on the right hand side on the toolbar I have toolbar buttons to toggle these panes on or off. I want to hide all the panes to begin with apart from the test script which you can't hide and down the bottom the active screen as we'll use this in this course. If at any point you need all the panels back restored to how they are in the default layout you can do this off the options tools options and there's a button to restore the layout. Let's now look at the test script. The first thing to understand about our test script is that there are two views. The keyword view, which is displayed here, but then we have another tab so we can see the script in what's called the expert view. Now don't be confused, there is only one script. In fact, this is what got recorded and is also what will get saved when we save the test. So the expert view is the true script. The keyword view is an interpretation of that script and it gives us a point and click icon based hierarchical interface that makes our script very easy to work with. So there are two views, keyword and expert. Which one should you use? Well to begin with in QTP the keyword view is the easiest view to work with. Later on, when we want to start doing some programming and entering VB script into our test script, then we can start exploring the expert view. In the keyword view, the script is displayed in a hierarchy. At the top of the hierarchy, we have the action, in this case, action one, as denoted by this pink block icon. Every test script within QTP has to have at least one action. So when you start a new test script, there will always be an action at the top and by default it will be called action one. We will cover actions later in the course. We'll be looking at multiple actions and how to reuse actions. But for now, all our recordings will be into a single action, the default action within any QTP script. Next to the action is an arrow which allows me to collapse and to expand my test steps. Each test step is displayed on a separate row and I can click and select an individual test step. When I do this, down at the bottom in the active screen, it shows me a screen capture of what was being performed in the application when that step was recorded. So for example, if I click on this test step here, I can see that this test step enters edge words into the passenger name in the flight application. Each test step comprises three parts, which are denoted by these column headings. The first one is the item, the second the operation, and the third one the value. 
Later in the course, we'll use the correct terms. Instead of item, we will call this the object. Instead of the operation, this will be called the method. And the value is fine, the value for the parameters. In the first column, the object column, each test step has an icon next to it. The icon represents the class of object. When I mean class of object, I mean the type of object. So for example, this first one, the first recorded test step, this icon represents the window the flight reservation window, which we can see highlighted down at the bottom in the active screen. This test step, this test step, this test step, and if I look at the bottom of the script, this test step as, as well, all share the same icon, which represents a Windows button. And we can see that in this last test step where I was clicking the Insert Order button in the flight application. This icon and this icon represent a Windows combo box, which are the drop-down boxes where we were selecting where we want to fly from and fly to. This icon represents a dialog. This icon this icon and this icon, again, all the same type of object, object, the same class of object, these represent a text box, a text edit field. And then finally, this icon represents a radio button. One of the unusual icons in this recorded script is this one. This icon actually represents an ActiveX object. So there is a custom object within this standard Windows application. You will very quickly get to recognize the icons, so straight away when you look at a script you'll be able to understand what type of object the test step was recorded against. Next to the icon we have the name of the object. This is all still within the item or the object column. So here we have the fly from combo box, the fly to combo box, here's an OK button, and here is the name text edit field. The name of the object is derived from the label or the attached text to the object. So it's what the user sees in the application. So this first column, the object column, shows us the class of objects, what type of object it was, and the name of the object. Next to the object, the next column is the operation column. Remember the correct term for this is the method. So here is our name edit field and the method being performed was a set method. And as the tooltip illustrates, the set method sets a value into a text field. So here we're setting edge words into the text field, which we can see down below in the active screen. Here's an OK Windows button, and the method performed here was a click. Clicks an object. Here's another button, the Insert Order button, and again the method performed was a click method. Here's another set method, where we have the tickets field, and we're setting the value 2 into it. In the third column, we actually have the value. So in the Fly From combo box, we are selecting an item and the item we're selecting is London. In the fly to, I'm selecting Los Angeles. This first statement here has a type statement. The reason for this is this is not a standard text field as we can see. Here are the standard text fields down here, the name, the tickets field, 
but the icon is different for this one and because this object is a custom object it's an active x object so we don't get the recognize set method instead we get a type method which is just typing a value into the field in this case the date there's a subtle difference between type and set the set method will replace any text that's already in a text field so when I set a value into a text field any text that's there at the moment will be replaced with the value I'm writing in with the type method that's not true the type will just type the value into the field from wherever the cursor is so if there's already text in that field it potentially could add this text to the existing text so far we've studied what comprises a test step so the object the method and the value the first three columns shown in the keyword view but in the keyword view we have another column the fourth column which is called documentation now this is read only and what it tries to do is translate the test step into English so it's trying to tell you exactly what the test step is doing so if you look at this first step it tells us here make the flight reservation window active select the London item from the fly from list click the flight button click the OK button enter edge words in the name edit box now if we use this documentation column in conjunction with the active screen which we have displayed down at the bottom when I click on each test step I should be able to understand what it's doing so if I select this step here the documentation tells me select the business radio button and if I look down in the active screen it highlights the object there it is selecting the business radio button enter 2 in the tickets field and we can see that in the active screen click the insert order button and there it is highlighted so as well as trying to explain in English I can also see it visually down in the active screen and this is the appeal of the keyword view it allows me to very quickly understand what each test step is doing so even if I hadn't recorded this script myself I could in theory just go through each test step reading the documentation and looking at the active screen and get an understanding of exactly what this test script is going to do when it is replayed the keyword view is very much a point and click interface so as well as selecting steps we can drag and drop steps here I've got the insert order button so the step that clicks on the insert order button and I'm just dragging this holding the left mouse button and you can see I can change it can change the order of the test steps so when I replay the steps they'll be executed in a different order obviously this wouldn't work in our application we can also select multiple steps so holding down control if they're not continuous or holding down shift we can select steps we can copy steps we can paste steps we can drag and drop them we can delete them if there's a step I don't need I can select it and press the delete button obviously warns me whether I want to delete it if I do there we go if I click in the method column we can see we get a drop down so I can see all the available methods all the types of operations I can perform on this class of object in this case a win windows combo box so I can do a mouse move get the visible text I can select a value and there are many methods a lot of these we'll look at as we go through the course and then over on the right hand side in the value column if I click in here a little button comes up so we can configure the value so if I wanted to fly, fly from London to Paris instead of Los Angeles I could change my data here I can type directly in or I can click the button the configure button that appears here's the value Los Angeles so if I change this to another valid value that's displayed in the fly to drop down list 
such as Paris, I've now changed my test data. So if I restore the layout within QTP, here's the flight application. I just set this to the initial condition and then I run my test again. Remember, it doesn't matter what test step you've got selected. Run will always run from the top. If you're watching the flight reservation application, this time we'll be selecting Paris from the fly to Windows combo box. And there we go, we can see it's inserted an order, this time from London to Paris. So it's very easy to change the test data and rerun the test for a different use case. Finally in this chapter, I just want to revisit the hierarchy in the keyword view. So looking at the script, remember that we recorded everything into action one. And we will cover multiple actions later in the course. And we have the little arrows next to it so we can expand and collapse the information, the test steps displayed. Now we can see that I also have one of these for the window, the flight reservation window. And that's because this is a parent object. All the test steps below took place on objects that belong to this parent window. And we can see that in the flight reservation application. All of these objects, the date of flight, these combo boxes, fly from, fly to, this button, these are all displayed as part of the flight reservation main window. So the window is the parent object, and these are all child objects of that parent window. And that hierarchy is displayed within the keyword view within QTP. In this module, we've looked more closely at the test script. We've compared the keyword and the expert views, concentrating on the keyword view. We've looked at the active screen and how that can visually tell us what the script is doing. We've seen that in the keyword view, there's an object hierarchy with parent and child objects. The icons in the keyword view represent object classes such as windows, buttons, dialogues, menu items, combo boxes, etc. And we've seen that each test step has three parts, the object, the method, and then the value. We've seen that we can edit test steps. It's now over to you to practice record and replay. Study your scripts carefully and try and get an understanding for exactly what each test step is doing in the application.